the problem with Joey Barton, right? I haven't got a problem with Joey Barton. I'm on X and he's the only interesting feature on there at the moment because it is satisfying seeing someone like him give the left waffer both barrels. And he is. He is giving them absolutely hell on there. And they don't like it. Because someone of Joey Barton's stock, we're not allowed... And yes, I do include myself as working class, by the way. We're not allowed to have alternative, intelligent uh, arguments, debates and discussions. Because to them, we are practically scum. The left didn't give a toss about Donald Trump when he was a a businessman and the fact that he did a lot to the black community over in the United States. However, when he became president of the United States and started to not think like them, that's when he became a problem and he wasn't allowed. And it's the same with people over here. Graham Linen, the writer of Father Ted, uh, J.K. Rowling, Lawrence Fox, Calvin Robinson, etc. And, and others, people the left have turned on quite violently simply because they are open to other opinions and start to think for themselves rather than going along with the grain. They've gone against it, and and that's not allowed. Now, if Twitter or X, it'll always be Twitter, won't it? (laughs) Um, If that was in its previous incarnation, then Joy Barton's account would have been gone ages ago. But thanks to Elon Musk buying it and, uh, you know, keeping free speech on there, We can see this magic taking place, and it is magic. The guy is quite literally running rings around the woke karate, or woke or haram, left waffa, call him what you will. And that's because he's pointing out the truth, and he's not allowed to do that, and they hate it. This is why they hate him. He says the truth, and the truth for these people is uncomfortable. He is pointing out the ludicrousy, that is, D-E-I, which means diversity, equity, and inclusivity. Now, I'm not sure if any of you uh, know the news in the United States recently. A commercial aircraft was forced to land because of the pilots. The pilot was hired on this DEI policy. It should be DIE, shouldn't it? Really. Because hiring people on DEI could mean the matter of life and death. Anyway, this pilot was hired on that policy and they failed a series of tests and they were let go. However, They were rehired because this certain airline were desperate for pilots and this person ticked boxes. So in order to uh, virtue signal, oh look, we're hiring these people because we're not racists. They hired this pilot and then nearly crashed the plane, didn't she? But we're not allowed to talk about that because it's uncomfortable. And these middle class lefty socialist pseudo intellectuals, and I call them pseudo intellectuals because even though they might be, or most of them are really, aren't they? They're completely out of touch. Um, university educated morons and they're pseudo intellectuals because they're not open to other opinions especially from people of Joey Barton's stock who is working class when Joey Barton was uh, doing his middle class thing which is playing football they had no problem with him because he fit his place in society however now that he's speaking out and pointing out their um, ridiculous ideologies be it trans ideology Uh, DEI, he's also pointed out affirmative action, and his main argument that female footballers with no experience of playing uh, football with males should not be giving commentary, which is fair enough, I think that's valid, I mean, wouldn't you? And that's the only thing he pointed out, it's the same with Lawrence Fox, he went on Question Time, and nobody gave a shit about him until he said that white privilege was a myth, which it is, and then his whole life is destroyed, and they'll do exactly the same thing with Joy Barton, and they're doing it as well. ITV have jumped on him. They will never, ever hire him now as a sports commentator simply for telling the truth. But he's still on Twitter. He is. He won't leave. <laughs> I think he's enjoying himself, really. This reminds me of the time when uh, Margaret Thatcher did her last uh, Prime Minister's questions before being outed by her own side in Parliament, and she was completely wiping the floor with the other side, the, the socialist at the time, Neil Kinnock's uh, Labour Party. And she said, I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying this, and it reminds me of of that. Now, I know Joey Barton isn't a particular pleasant person, he has a history, but still, can we, on, on the right of politics, can we be choosy when a, a celebrity speaks up for us, which they rarely do, because they're scared, don't they? They're scared of losing their place in the top tier of society. Now, obviously, 
I don't want any wrong in speaking of us, but still, you know. And the guy has some funny wit about him as well, and he's not pulling any punches on there when he's giving it back to them. And that's how you deal with the left now. They, they won't listen to debate or argument. They would rather cancel you and ruin your life. So what better way to deal with these morons than to mock them and just tell the truth? The truth is uncomfortable enough for them. The truth that DEI simply isn't working. The truth that the left waffer are mainly hypocrites. They say one thing, yet do another. He's taken a swipe at the climate alarmists as well, so he's targeting everyone here. And all they're coming back at him is calling him a sexist and a fascist and a racist and the usual tropes. And that is the problem with Joey Barton. He's a middle-class guy who was playing a middle-class sport until he started saying the wrong things. And there we go. I'm Paz49. Thanks for listening. And until the next time, have a great evening. And Roger Trout.